No, I'm here to support the, you know, the real, real event. I think um, supporting our young African American filmmakers is uh, is important. Uh, everyone needs an opportunity. Everyone needs a start. And who knows, you know, the next Gina Prince Live would could come from with an event like this. So, you know, I'm all I'm all about that. And also to uh, talk about my book from Fatherless to Fatherhood. It's a memoir that I wrote about my life. And it, it came from a real moment that I had with my son uh, that caused me to reflect on growing up without a father and then becoming a father. And uh, so it's about, it's about childhood, manhood, and fatherhood. And um, I'm excited to get that to the people, get it to y'all It's coming out this Father's Day. Something that you learned about yourself before writing the book that you didn't know? I mean, was there something that kind of surprised you as you were writing? Like, why I didn't know this about myself? Oh, that's a great, that's actually a great question. Um, I wouldn't say there was something specifically that I learned new, but it's very hard to, to talk about yourself. It's just hard to deconstruct yourself and sort of look at yourself in third person, you know? And, and I think when you're telling your, your story, you know you so well, so you skip over things that another person was like, yo, I needed to know this, that, and this, you know what I mean? And so I think it was the challenge was to have the patience to just really flow through every phase of my life and really try to connect the reader to these feelings and these memories. This is how, you know, when I was at the premiere at Juice, everybody on the outside might be thinking this, but I'm actually thinking this in this moment. You know what I mean? So that people can connect on a human level. Um, but that's, that's what I'm saying. One big question I know that everyone has is, will there be a love and basketball too? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me and Gina actually talked about that once. Oh, and, uh, oh up we, next? Uh, me and Gina talked about that and we, we Honestly, it's just, it's a, it's a classic film, so we just kind of leave that alone. It's like remaking half of Stevie Wonder's music catalog. Just don't do it. <laughs> but you can see Blake Lee's chemistry in the movie was so, it was so bomb. Like, were y'all actually a real couple? After. Afterwards? Yeah, yeah, after. But that was, I mean, we were back. <laughs> <laughs> Brianna Weaver, as told by Bree, what are some challenges that you faced in fatherhood, seeing that you grew up without a father? What were some things that you found out that you had to learn on your own? Uh, I mean, basically all of it. Yeah. You know, there's no, I didn't have a blueprint. I didn't have a manual. And um, just I, it, it, at the same time, I mean, because I didn't have that, I was never going to be that to my kids. Mm -hmm. But learning how to be interactive with your kids, like, that's one of the things I'm talking about in the book. Like, you can't just cut a check. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, take them to school, take them to the ball game. Like, you gotta be, in, you know, interactive with your kids. And, and um, it's, I mean, if anyone, anyone's a parent, it never changes. It's a constant challenge, mm -hmm. you know? Because now I got an 18 year old, my oldest daughter, you know, going to college and all that. That's a whole new phase. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then, and now in my mind, at least at this point, I can imagine, you know, when my kids get old enough that, you know, they find this and the other, they start in families and they own, you know, all these different phases and never stop being your kids. So the wheels fall over. Joel from JoelBazil.com. So what can we expect from, from Isaac Johnson on, on season three of Shooter? Oh, it, season three is, is, uh, is crazy. It's, it, it gets... I, I, you know, my character is, found himself in a really dark place at the, at the end of last season, so now he's like a, a, a broken samurai. Like, he, he, he's just going, you know, balls to the wall, like, he just don't care. <laughs> but it's really, it's, it's, it's a real fun season, this season. We're almost done. I think we're done. And once again, we all know that Atlanta is a billion dollar film industry with tons of... Multi multi-billion dollar film industry with lots of upcoming, especially black talent. Mm -hmm. Why do you think diversity in film is so important, not just in front of the camera, but in executive positions and in production positions as well? I mean, because it has to reflect what the world really looks like. Right. 
I mean, it's interesting how Hollywood is always surprised when it's like people of color, whether it's us, whether it's Latino, like, and they're massively successful. It's like, duh, this is, <laughs> this is what makes up the world. Uh, and I think I'm just so happy and proud of Ryan Cooper and everyone involved with, with Black Panther because that's, that's one of those opportunities where we proved it. You know what I mean? Because let me tell you something, it making the money here is one thing, but they didn't think it was going to make that money internationally. And that's one of the, how they, they have the gatekeepers where they're like, oh, it's not going to translate internationally. You know what I mean? If you put it out there, it will. You know, half of the stuff, they don't even put it out there. They just make the money here. So something like that, making that much money, they're all scratching their heads. Because one thing people forget, Hollywood is show business. So it's about, it, for them, it's about the profit at the end of the day. And that's why, you know, when you talk about the executive level, we have to be in those decision-making positions to create these opportunities to show and prove, oh yeah, we can make a billion dollar franchise. Oh, we could do this. Oh, we could do that. You know, and it's all happening. It's all happening, slowly but surely, it's happening. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. What inspired you to want to get into the entertainment industry? Um, writing. You know, I've, I've been writing for as long as I can remember, and the acting became a, a natural extension of that. And one of my forever heroes is Sidney Poitier. Wow. Um, that's who I grew up, you know, and just his his grace and his poise and his elegance and power would, would strike me when I was younger and I was like, you know, I got to, I, and then, you know, I did a school play and I got bit by the acting. There's one more in the back, right? One more in the back? With um, Ryan Coogler and um, Jordan Peele, how do you think, with their success recently, how do you think that's going to change the film industry and what do you expect out of it with the Oscar and just with all the the prominence around black film right now? Um, I don't know that I, I can say I have an expectation. I mean, there's a logical sort of equation that you would think would happen. Yes. Um, but I think in mass, it's just going to be more opportunities. You know, even if uh, an event like this, you know, giving just filmmakers a shot to show their work, let them touch the people. And you know, which, I mean, Jordan Peele is a great example. Look at this guy's career. It's phenomenal. No one would think, oh, he's going to win a Oscar one day for writing and directing this thriller. He comes from Key and Pitt. You know, but this is what we do with artists, you know. And so I think, I would hope that, you know, those two guys and, and their success would create opportunity for another thousand. You know what I mean? Because now you're talking about, uh, Filmmakers, when there's a set of people, you know, it could be 300 people on set. So now you're talking about everyone from wardrobe to camera to the grips to electric uh, to, the, I mean, just every department, you know, us getting in there, you know, makeup and hair, and, and people being able to find their, their vein. Um, and, you know, down here, it's this black Hollywood. You know, I mean, it's it's incredible to see what's happening down here, and I think it's just gonna keep going. Black Hollywood, there's no way, no better way to end it. <laughs> yeah, appreciate Thank the time. You Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. He's Thank gonna you be over to the right. Focus on the platform. His book. I mean, that's what he's gonna be doing. Basically, signing books, giving it to consumers, and uh, let's get that story on how to protect our black men. That's what it's all about. That's why he's here to help us out. Use it platform. So thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank, thank you guys. You. Thank you.